same pack for now. Okay, so we're going to look at the last part of chapter five, and the last part of chapter five to do with radians is to do with something called small angle approximations. And so on these graphs I've got here, I have drawn two different graphs using Desmos. This first graph that I've got is, this blue graph is obviously the sine graph, and you can see that I've plotted this sine graph in radians, not in degrees. And I've also plotted the line y equals x, okay? So I've got the line y equals x, and I've got the sine graph. And then for the bottom half of this page, I have plotted the cosine graph, y equals cos x, and I've also plotted the line y equals 1 minus a half x squared, or 1 minus x squared over 2. And I just want you to have a look at those graphs and just tell me what you notice about these graphs. What do you notice? Is there anything that you can spot about these graphs um, just visually that you see about them? Zero? Yeah, so first of all, we notice for these two graphs they've got here, they're intersecting at the same point around where x is equal to zero. They are intersecting at the same point. And that's true over here. This one also, they both intersect at one. This one, they're both intersecting at zero. But I'm wondering if we can add a bit more detail to that. It looks like here, these look like they have the same gradient at this particular point as well. And this looks like they have the same gradient. What would you say the gradient here is? Zero. So they've both got a turning point. So there's something that these two graphs have got in common. The things they've got in common so far is they have the same y-intercept and they have the same gradient. Here, they also have the same y-intercept and it appears as though they have the same gradient. They actually do have the same gradient at zero. Um, what else, just generally, do we notice? Not necessarily like properties of the graphs, but just looking at them, what do you see? For small angles, they give like very similar outputs. Yeah, for very small angles here, they actually give almost exactly the same output value. Okay, you can see that when you do a very small value, the red line and the blue line are basically the same thing. But as you go further to bigger values, the red line and the blue line are no longer that close to each other. And it's the same thing down here, that for the cosine graph, when you use these small values, it's actually really, really similar. You can't tell the difference between the blue and the red graphs, okay? You can't tell the difference between those blue and those red graphs. And this is what we call small angle approximations. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. And this is what the last exercise is about. So approximately what we see here is that sine x is approximately equal to x when x is small. And we can just see that visually when x is small and x is in radians. Because it doesn't work when it's in degrees. If you plotted it when it's in degrees, and I'll show you that in a second, they don't look similar to each other. It's only when it's in radians. And this one down here shows us that cos x is approximately equal to one minus x squared over two. And it's the same thing that when x is small and when x is in radians. For both of those things, that's the case that we have. And these are called the small angle approximations, and they do pop up in the formula book, but they're not very difficult to remember. Um, if you do further maths, you will know why these are the approximations eventually. And Sam, I think you probably know them from what you were telling me about with the some of the stuff we talked about in your personal statement. These are the um, Maclaurin series expansions. Yeah, so it would be the next one would be plus x to the power of four over four. And for sine, it would be minus x cubed over three factorial. Maybe it should have been over factorial. No, over, over three. Anyway, that's just li some links to further maths if you, if you do further maths. And then I've also got here the tan graph as well. And I've plotted with the tan graph x as well as tan x. Again, you'll notice that it's in radians. And you can see again that for small values of x, tan x is approximately equal to x. And again, it must be measured in radians. If it's not measured in radians, it doesn't look like the graph is the same thing. As soon as you start doing a bigger value of x, it stops being a good approximation because the graphs start diverging away from each other. They're no longer lying on top of each other um, in the way that they are around zero. And you're probably thinking, who cares? 
but you need to know this in order for us to be able to make some things true about calculus, about differentiation and integration in the future lessons that we have. At the moment, I agree with you, who cares? But I will use this in the future to try and convince you of some things that are more interesting, okay? So for the small angle approximations, this is what we're actually talking about here. Most of the notes are already written. So I've said if x is in radians, we can see from the graph that as x approaches zero, the two graphs are approximately the same, i.e. sine x is equal to x. However, if x was in degrees, then we can see that this is not the case. So the axes have had to change. y equals x would be very, very steep and y equals sine x, if you imagine this going from zero all the way to 360 off the page here, they would not be similar to each other at all. So that's why it only works when it is in radians. So I've written these three summaries here. When theta is small, doing it with theta instead of x, it doesn't really matter. Both sine theta and tan theta are approximately equal to theta, and cos theta is approximately equal to one minus theta squared over two. Now, if you've got your calculators out, and if you can check that your calculators are in radians mode, and just try it out. Try a small value. Try doing something like the sine of 0 0.2. 0 0.2 seems pretty small. And just see what your calculator gives you when you do the sine of 0 0.2. You get 0.19866 which is basically 0.2. But if you try something like the sine of 2.5, you get 0.5984. And they are not approximately equal to each other because 2.5 is going to be way off in this area over here where sine is doing something that's different. Okay, So this is quite a useful thing for a number of reasons, um, but they love to throw this in as just a small question every now and then. So we're going to do a quick um, geometric proof um, rather than me just telling you that these things are true. We're going to have a think about a geometric proof here. So the area of the sector OAB, what's the area of the sector OAB that we've got here? So it's a half R squared theta and in this case R is equal to 1 so it's just a half theta. And what's the area of the triangle OAB? It's a half AB sine C, which in this case is going to be a half times one times sine theta. As we make theta become small, like this diagram here, the area of the triangle and the area of the sector, the slice, basically become the same as each other. If you imagine theta becoming really small, rather than this being seen as like a slice of pizza shape, it's basically the size of a triangle. So we can say that a half theta, the area of the sector, is approximately equal to a half sine theta. Cancel the halves. Theta is approximately equal to sine theta. And so this proof only works, this geometric proof, because of this formula that we used at the top. And when is this formula true? For what conditions must, it, must um, be met for this formula to be true? Theta, theta, theta. theta doesn't have to be acute, no. Theta has to be in radians, which is why this is only true if it's in radians. So I've written that down. Note, this only works for radians because we use the sector area formula for radians doesn't work in degrees. The fact that sine theta is equal to theta is enormously important when we come to differentiation because we will eventually use it to show that sine x differentiates to cos x. If you don't have this fact about sine x being, sorry, sine theta being equal to theta for small values, we can't do this proof of differentiation in the future, okay? So we're going to think about how we might apply this into some questions, and then we'll just do 15, 20 minutes of practice of this, and then we're going to move on to chapter six. So they've told us when theta is small, find the approximate value of this expression that we have got to begin with. So my first one says sine two theta plus tan theta, all divided by two theta. And they have said that theta is small, which means I can use the small angle approximations. 
So what do we think sine 2 theta is approximately going to be equal to? 2 theta. Yeah, I'm just wanting to show it's whatever's the argument, whatever the thing that's inside the trig function is the thing it's going to be equal to. And tan theta, we know, is approximately equal to theta. So when I do this here, I would have just 2 theta plus theta divided by 2 theta, which is 3 theta divided by 2 theta, which is 3 over 2. And just to illustrate that, let's make theta something small. Let's make theta 0.1, just as an example, just to show you what's actually working here. If I type into my calculator sine of 0.2 plus tan of 0.1, and I divide it by 2 times 0.1, which is 0.2, what do you expect the calculator to give you? Three over two. You should expect your calculator to give you three over two. So let's just see what happens if I do sine of 0.2 plus tan of 0.1 and I divide it by 0.2, I get 1.49502, which is approximately equal to three over two. But this wouldn't work if I did a value of theta that was bigger because it's a small angle approximation. And they love to do that. They love to say, um, like Sam substituted in this angle to see if he could make a prediction. Like, what has he done wrong? Or like, has he done something wrong? You're like, yeah, he's put in a big angle. It only works for small angles. And how small is small? Um, like, naught point something small. <laughs> okay, just r as long as it's close to zero, it'll be fine. Now, part B of the question, we've got cos 4 theta minus 1 all over theta sine 2 theta. I close the door because of the car alarm. It's gone off. It's as though the door closing made the car alarm go off. Um, so we already know what sine 2 theta is because I've done that, but I want to talk about what cos 4 theta is. So cos 4 theta is approximately equal to um, 1 minus theta squared over 2. Now, when I do theta squared, please do not do this. What's the mistake I've done? I have to square the 4 as well, OK? When I'm doing theta squared, I'm saying whatever this thing is here, it needs to be squared. So cos of 4 theta will approximately be equal to 1 minus 16 theta squared over 2, which is just 8 theta squared, because 16 over 2 is 8. So let's go back over here, and I can start using all of my substitutions. This is basically just glorified substitu substitution. They're just checking, can you substitute here? So I will have cos 4 theta, which is 1 minus 8 theta squared, but then I've still got a minus 1, all divided by theta multiplied by sine 2 theta, which is approximately equal to 2 theta. So I come up with this expression, where I have 1 minus 1 cancels out. So I get minus 8 theta squared divided by 2 theta squared which is negative 4. So the approximate value of this, I guess I really should have been using these symbols throughout to show that it's all approximate. This expression for small values of theta when measured in radians will be equal to negative 4. And again, if you wanted to, you could substitute in 0 0.1 into all of these places, and your calculator will give you something that is close to negative 4. It won't give you exactly negative 4, but it'll be close. Yeah, Harmon? Yeah, to explain why it is this, the reason behind it is something that's it's called the, the, it has an expansion. It's got a series expansion of cos theta. But to explain that, we have to learn about some quite difficult things from further maths that these guys haven't started yet and would take me about probably like four hours to build up to it. So for now, you just need to trust me that this is true for cos theta. But if you're interested in it and you end up studying maths at university or engineering at university, guaranteed you will find out why cos theta is approximately equal to this, OK? Or three blue, one brown radians. Yeah, or three blue, one brown, uh, which I can't remember what the title perhaps would be for this one, series expansions, maybe. But if you're interested and you want to know why, I can find a video to show you that we'll do it in not in five hours like I would probably take to do it, OK? Um, so we're going to just do one more bit down here, and then you're going to do some practice for me. 
Again, there's the hint of it saying when theta is small, show that the left-hand side is approximately equal to this bit here. So I'm just going to dive straight in with this. So that's sine 5 theta plus tan 2 theta minus cos 2 theta. That is going to be approximately equal to... Um, Ahmed, what's, what's the first two bits going to be approximately equal to? What's this going to be approximately equal to? And the next bit? Okay, good. And then because this is minus here, you need to make sure that you do minus and you open up the brackets. What do you think cos of 2 theta would be? It's 2 theta. It would be 2 theta squared. The formula for it is here or on the previous page. It's theta squared over 2. So it would be 1 minus 2 theta squared over 2. So that is going to be 7 theta minus 1 plus. Now, 2, two squared over 2 is just 2. So it's approximately equal to, just as they wanted it to be, 2 theta squared plus 7 theta minus 1. Just writing it in a different order here. And then part B of the question is asking us to do some interpretation. Because in the previous questions, did you notice how we came up with a numerical answer? A numerical answer, no matter what you put into the calculator, you would always come up with something close, well, not no matter what you put in. As long as you put in a small value, you would come up with these values. But this time, we've come up with something that's actually got theta in the answer. And it says to us, what state the approximate value of this for small values of theta. So because theta is small, I'm going to say I can just ignore it because I'm already saying it's small. Yeah, it's going to make a difference, but it's not going to make a big difference. So because theta is small, I can ignore theta and theta squared, because theta squared is going to be even smaller than theta, because it's a zero point something number. So because theta is small, I can ignore theta and theta squared. So sine 5 theta plus tan 2 theta minus cos 2 theta is just going to approximately equal what? Minus 1. It will just approximately be equal to minus 1. And that's because this is what it's approximately equal to. If you think about it being 0 0.01, 2 times 0 0.01 squared plus 7 times 0 0.01, yeah, it's going to be something, but it's going to be pretty small. It's still going to mean that the overall answer is going to be close to minus 1. It doesn't equal minus 1. It is approximately equal to minus 1 that we've got there. So I'm going to ask you to do some questions from exercise 5F. Um, there's not many questions there. I think we'll probably do about 15 minutes work on this and then we'll start the next chapter.